We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his entire household, all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless every single one of us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, when people get married, it's something very, very great. It's a very happy occasion. And I'm sure 100% of people get married in order to build their lives and in order to cross a phase in their lives. I don't know of sane people who actually marry in order to break, in order to break their relationship later on. If people knew that we're not going to get along at all, they would not marry. Here I'm speaking of normal human beings. When people are getting married, they think that inshallah we will get along. Inshallah perhaps we will have children together. Inshallah we will overcome the challenges of life. Sometimes they undertake without realizing to each other that don't worry, I live with your folks. Don't worry, if it's a person who's been previously married, I'll take care of the children as though they are mine. These are big undertakings that you may not know how they may turn out. But they're saying it with a good heart. They say it with a brilliant heart. Don't worry. If you are living in a hut, I'll come and live with you. Subhanallah. Yes, it sounds romantic. It's really good. It sounds sweet. But two years down the line, please don't change your mind. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. So these type of statements we need to be careful of. And I'm addressing those who are not married as well as those who are. Because if you're not married and you say you're ready to compromise so much, are you really sure that 10 years down the line, you will still be ready to compromise that? I recall people who ask me saying, you know, I want to get married to someone and my folks are not agreeing. Is it possible? Should I, for example, get married to them in a way or perhaps a person is already married and they are talking about a polygamous situation and someone asks advice. Should we marry them in secret? Perhaps, you know, people shouldn't know about it just to make things halal. My beloved sister, let me tell you 10 years from that moment, you will regret because people have to know you will. You cannot keep on living this romantic little bubbly life as a secret. When you are expecting to have children, you also want honor and dignity at some point. It might last one or two years and then you get fed up and sick about it. So or sick of it, then what would happen is you would want out or you would start saying, look, I really need to change things. I might have agreed at the beginning, but I can't carry on like this. Well, that's why we are talking to you today. That's why we are telling you when you marry, marry with honor, marry with dignity. Don't marry undertaking things that you don't think about. They may not be possible to continue with a few years down the line. You say, I love with your folks, don't worry. Yes, we're living in a, an extended family, no problem. Alhamdulillah, I'm ready to sacrifice. We know what the Prophet ﷺ taught us to sacrifice. I'm ready to sacrifice my beloved sister, my brother. The Prophet ﷺ taught you to sacrifice indeed, but he has bestowed upon you by the will of Allah certain rights. You have those rights, it's your right. Then later on, you start saying, you know what? I want my rights. I just want my rights. And the husband will tell you, well, when we married, you had actually foregone those rights. You told me you don't want this now. How can you ask for it? Well, it's my right to ask for my rights now. I've changed my mind. And then the marriages break. So I want to talk about for the next 15 to 20 minutes, something extremely important. Why do marriages break? When we married, we were so happy. We were delighted. We were excited. We made promises. We said we are going to sacrifice. We were told that marriage is not easy. It's not a joke. But I tell you, it breaks for many reasons. Number one, when you're not prepared to sacrifice for your spouse. Number one, when you're not prepared to stand up for your spouse. Number one, when you do not protect your spouse. Notice I said three things. All of them are number one. You notice? The reason is I can't tell you number two and three. These are all important matters. So my beloved brothers and sisters, when you don't stand up to protect your spouse from the evil of your own mother, your marriage is not going to work. You might say my mother has rights. How can you say that she's evil? She's not evil. Shaitan is evil. Shaitan comes and makes her say things and I can explain to you why. You were not married. Your mother 
your sister, perhaps someone else in your family had you all to themselves. So you spent money on them, you spent time with them, and you took them on holiday, you went around with them. Now you need to start your life. You need someone who's going to be called a mother to other children who will belong to you. They also have rights. So when you get married, it is natural, natural, human nature. Shaitan comes and actually fuel that and make it worse, makes it worse. What happens? Now you cannot spend as much money on your sister or your mother as you did before because now you need to save. So before I had a paycheck and I used to just give it to my folks. Now I have a paycheck, my wife has to share, I have a living, I have a house, I have a car. So naturally, sometimes people will feel, hey, I've lost out. Up to that point, it's still natural. Beyond that, Shaitan comes in Tampa and says, listen, I hate my sister-in-law, meaning your wife. So your sister is saying, I hate my sister-in-law. Not because she's a bad person. Not because of anything. She's taken my brother away from me. I, I hate my daughter-in-law because she's taken my son away from me. My beloved mother, my beloved sister. Trust me, my wife has not taken you or me away from each other at all. I have responsibilities. You had the privilege and the honor of having a little bit more of me when I was single. Now I'm no longer single. I have a priority. People say, obey your parents. I say, not when you are married and they are wrong. Remember this. Don't think it's noble to obey your parents when they are glaring you in the face with something haram, something wrong. They are usurping the rights of your wife. They, are, they cannot be obeyed. There is now someone who is a mother to your children who you need to consider. Yes, we will side with what is right and who is right, whether it's your mother or your wife. Remember this. So I'm not saying that your parents should be disregarded. No, respect them at all times. You know, if you go back to the, to the Quran and to the Sunnah of Muhammad Wasallam, he never says that you blindly adopt and accept everything your parents say. Not once did he say that, not even once. In fact, the Quran says, in another place, Ihsana, Allah has asked you to be good and kind to your parents. He did not say obedient. Remember why? Because obedience belongs to Allah. That's what it is. If your parents are right, I will adopt what they are saying because they are right. If they are wrong, I will kindly tell them, respectfully tell them that you are wrong. Allahu Akbar. So I owe them kindness. When you look at the hadith of your mother, who next your mother, who next your mother, songs have been made about it. You know that, right? That never speaks of obedience. Do you know this? We need to clarify this because many, many mothers are suffering from the wrath or the pain that is inflicted upon them by their mothers in law and vice versa. Vice versa, I'm going to get to that just now. What does this mean? I'm his mother. He should listen to me first. No, I'm now a man. When I was not married, yes, indeed. When I'm married, I just need to remember my mother's also a human being. She can make mistakes. I love her. I will kiss her. I will honor her. It does not mean I need to give all my cash to her. She will not decide what to cook every day as though my wife is just a worker who's come here to work. This is happening in a lot of homes where the woman comes in. Yes, we're living together. My beloved mother-in-law, we love you. And I'm talking here about my own mother too. Beautiful woman, Alhamdulillah. And I'm saying it in a beautiful way. We all love to live together. But you don't make the decisions in this home. No, not at all. If you're not a man, my beloved brother, who's now a husband, if you're not man enough to side with your spouse when your mother is wrong or when she's overstepping her rights, Trust me, there will be frustration caused by you in the marriage and the marriage will break because today's girls are not like a long time ago. When a car is damaged, they can send it for panel beating. No longer. Now when the car is damaged, I want a new one. I want out. That's what it is. Today, for the smallest reason, they want out. You had the first problem. I want out. That's another point that breaks marriages where we have a sickness. Instead of helping each other when we are gone wrong, the husband doesn't want to hear, look, this is how my home is, take it or leave it while I'm leaving it. Then the marriage breaks and what happens? We end in divorce for nothing. It could have been the best marriage. We can still work it. We can, but we're being stubborn. You, my beloved brother, stubborn. You, my dear sister, you are stubborn. 
And you know what? You're allowing people to have a say who are not supposed to be having a say. The worst is when you go to an alim or a counselor and he tells you, just make sabr. That's it. My brother, my beloved Mawlana, Sheikh, whatever you call yourself, stop saying to the people, make sabr. When you see that someone is oppressing another, it is an ibadah to stop oppression, my brothers and sisters. I will tell you, look, you know, your mother is wrong. Your father has caused the damage here. I will tell you that. You can hate me for it. But it's a fact. If that is the case. The same applies. Sometimes a daughter-in-law will come into the home and already she's been trained by her friends who might have gone through other experiences. That's your enemy. So from day one, she'll say, hey, mother-in-law. Mother-in-law says, Salaamu Alaikum. Welcome to the home. And she says, hey, hey, hey relax. Take it easy. Take it easy. May Allah forgive us. Stop coming in with these preconceived ideas. Give them a chance. They love you too. They love their children. Remember, if a divorce happens, that man who was your husband will remain the son of that particular woman forever, even though you are now out of the picture. But my beloved mother, the boy is not married to you. He's your child. He will remain your child. Remember that. Subhanallah. My dear sister, that brother of yours will remain your brother. The love is not going to go. But when you start treating your sister-in-law, who is now the wife of that young man, who is your brother, badly, just because he doesn't spend the weekends with you, he doesn't take you on those holidays anymore. Some people have another bad habit. What's the bad habit? And I'm talking of things that are real because 80% or maybe more of the problems that people actually relate to us are connected to their living. And a lot of it is to do with marriage. So sometimes you get married, mashallah, you know, it's a sacrifice. It's a very big sacrifice. You will need to adjust. You must learn to serve each other. You know, one might say, okay, do I really need to cook? Well, if I say no to you and no to him, I think you guys can stay on those pills, inshallah. You can just buy a bottle and every for lunch, pop in a pill. And well, when I say pop pills, please, I'm talking of the right thing. <laughs> so, you know, for lunch, you have a little tablet and for supper, you have a tablet. That's not what life is. You, someone, somewhere, somehow is going to have to cook. So you need to help each other sort that matter out. You know, you want me to go out to work? Well, you're going to have to help here. It's something respectful. I'm not saying that it's bad, but for someone to sit over and above, complain about how the food was cooked, when it was cooked. It's my choice. If I am married and I'm a woman, I can get up at 6.30 in the morning, finish cooking and go away. Or I can cook at 12.30. It's up to me. Why must my mother-in-law dictate to me, listen, 6.30 you're in the kitchen here. For what? It will break a marriage. Remember this. And you know, it might be cultural, but I'm talking from an Islamic perspective. She does not have the right to do that. She, yes, you may want to cook, you may want to honor. And I know of so many cases where the daughters-in-law don't mind. It's an honor for them to cook. But they just want a small acknowledgement. MashaAllah, thank you so much. You cooked for us, Alhamdulillah. They don't want you to pick on them and make this and make that. And you know, I'm inviting half the dunya. Relax. This person here, just because they can cook well, doesn't give you the license to invite who you want for tea and for supper and for the same. My daughter, you know, will cook. Even if you and her are on a good footing, on a good relationship, it will break it. She might be cursing you from inside to say, you know what? Inconsiderate. Can't you see? I need my time. My... It's okay if it's once a month. You know, nowadays they say once a year. But anyway, no matter what, it's okay depending on how you are with these people. It's your family. These things go wrong. So as I was saying, you go in, sacrifice. You would, who wouldn't want to sacrifice? But there needs to be appreciation. So I was saying, sometimes we go on holiday. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Who do we tag along? We tag along the entire dunya. So I go, my wife goes. Who else goes? Well, I'm talking of initially when you don't have children. My mother has to come. My dad has to come. My sisters, my brothers who are unmarried have to come. Sometimes my sister who's married with her husband has to come. That's not a holiday. To be honest with you, if you have a family who loves doing that and genuinely they all looking forward to it, you are fortunate. But sometimes people want their private moments. Hey, I want to go and be able to just be myself. No worry about cooking anything for, for one week. Please. I think you would owe that. Owe oh, that maybe not from an Islamic perspective, as in holidays are not farah, but it's something that would actually help your marriage. Give them a break. Give them a break. Spend the money that you've been earning. Don't just keep it in the bank. 
and wait for the day you die when everyone will be scrounging. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So the reason I say this, there are problems and people are not providing solutions. And the problems, you cannot just say one person is wrong. At times we don't want to listen to what the problem is. At times we know the problem, but we are too weak to actually address the problem. That's my father. I don't want to address this matter. Your father respectfully address it. He doesn't like you. He doesn't like your wife. As a result, his weakness, not yours. I cannot allow oppression to continue forever. I live in the same home. They don't talk to each other until when that's not healthy for the house. You don't speak to her for what? What's the problem? Did she eat something of yours? Did she say something? If she did treat her as your own child or your own mother and say, look, this happened. I was very hurt. Inshallah, it mustn't happen again. You need to learn to say, I'm sorry. It happened the moment I was upset. We had a misunderstanding. Allah has given us a good way out. Blame Shaitan. You know, really, I didn't want to say it. Shaitan made me say it. <laughs> That's such a beautiful outlet. Imagine Allah gave you a way out. You can have sworn someone five minutes later. You say, you know what? That was shaitan. Brother, I love you. <laughs> I swear. Subhanallah. Imagine. So the problem is when you become the shaitan yourself. Then when you say it was shaitan, you say, yeah, I know you're the biggest shaitan. <laughs> so my brothers and sisters, we need to resolve the matters quickly. I always say, look, what if this was your own child? What would you do? Well, I would listen to them. I would try and obey. I, I would try and solve. I would try and, you know, listen to what they are saying. Well, treat them like your child, because if you don't, you, the marriage is going to break and too many marriages are breaking. Another difficulty, and this is something that I found in a lot of cases, when we have daughters or sons, we sometimes spoil them so badly as they are growing up so much that we don't realize their spouses may not be able to give them such a life that we provided. As a result, they may never be able to live with anyone, anyone at all. They may never, because why? Everything was on the plate. They've never lifted a plate. Forget about anything else. Everything was given. You wanted a holiday, you got it. You wanted a Ferrari, you got it. You wanted to go to Harari, you went. Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah make it easy. Sometimes even if you can afford the most luxurious of lives, I'm not saying become stingy, but learn to teach them what appreciation is. You don't have to splash because sometimes they may not have, you may not have it a few years down the line. You need to learn to adjust your life. That's your spouse. You make it. You're going to have children. They're going to mess your clothes. They're going to do so much. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So my brothers and sisters, something extremely important is to work hard to resolve the problems you have in the marriage, but with justice. What does that mean? Don't just think you are the only one who's right. You may be wrong. And this goes both ways. Sometimes the daughter-in-law is wrong. I've had cases where daughter-in-law comes to complain and it ends up that she is disrespectful to the parents of her own husband. We are not saying you need to serve them at least be respectful, be kind, be good with your words. Excuse them, they are old. You know what the Quran says? The Quran speaks about how Allah has created man. Allah has created you, O man. In a stage of weakness, you were weak when you were born, very weak. So what happened? Someone had to look after you. If they didn't, your survival was at stake. After that weakness, we gave you strength. And after that strength, we reduced you back to weakness and gray hair, which means it's worse than just weakness. You were strong at one stage. You become a person weak once again. And I believe that sometimes, and I'm going to say something, you know, that you might think about later. When you are young, you might mess your napkin and your mother will clean it. Your father might help or your siblings or whoever else. Where did you mess? You messed because your sphincter muscle was not actually controlled. It was not strong enough to hold back. You didn't know how to use it. So perhaps urinated, perhaps you might have messed your napkin, whatever it was. That was a gift that Allah bestowed upon you. Your parents need to know, I sacrificed for the child. But when a person grows older, they may not mess that way. 
they may miss from their mouths. Remember this carefully. Why? Dirtier words than changing the napkin can come out from elderly people who are in pain sometimes, who are frustrated sometimes, where there's a generation gap and they don't understand. If there's more than, nowadays I'd like to say 25 years, 30 years, between you and your, your parents, there's bound to be a generation gap, understanding gap, bound to be. Remember this. Usually they used to say 40 years is a generation, completely different thinking. But I think it's gone a little bit less now because technology is advancing every minute. So the way I think might not be the way my children who are 25 years younger than me may think. I will, no matter how cool a dad I think I'm going to be, or a father-in-law or a mother-in-law, there will be differences in thinking because there's a generation gap. So out of frustration sometimes you say things that are hard, harsh, you don't realize that's not your child, it's someone else's daughter, someone else's son, you've hurt them. When someone else hurts the child of another person, the hurt is deeper, the cut is deeper than if it was your own child. Remember that. Be careful. Now I'm addressing those who were hurt by what the elderly have said to you. Ignore it. Change the nappy and carry on. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. If you've understood what I've said. Let it happen. The next day they'll beg for forgiveness. They might carry. The difficulty is sometimes the elderly are stubborn. They don't ask for forgiveness. Come what may. They are wrong. We found out that they said one plus one is three and the whole dunya knows it's two. They won't apologize. It's three. It's three. I'm telling you it's three. You say, no, but it's two. Who said you can't subtract one from three? So that's the type of answers you get. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. These people are witty. They are sharp. They know. Sometimes they don't apologize. Because why? I'm an elderly person. Who are, who are you that I must apologize to you? My beloved elderly, a lot of you are geniuses. You don't make those mistakes. But if you do, subhanallah, please apologize. Please apologize. Learn to make amends. We don't want our children's marriages to break because we are putting pressure on our daughters-in-law or sons-in-law or anyone else. But something that happens when you get old and you are in pain, your level of tolerance becomes very, very less. The level is low, very low. Your fuse becomes five amps when it was 15 before. Any small thing and it's blown. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. So sometimes, and I know, usually when you hear a little bit of a rant, you hear something, you know, you can say, subhanallah, you're in pain. You can say, hey, really, it's so, you know. Subhanallah, it happens because that's how the body operates sometimes. You vent out something in a different way without realizing it's wrong, no matter what it's wrong. My brothers and sisters, as I end, I want to just ask you one thing. This topic is wrong. And I think I'm going to speak about it again with a little bit more uh, detail. But what I want every one of us, those who are married, those who are not, those who have children who are married, those who do not, I want you to undertake for the sake of Allah on this beautiful Friday, in your heart, here and now, that you will make life easy for those whom you live with. The ummah is suffering. We don't need more suffering. At least in your home, sort out the matters. Learn to give people a little bit of their independence. Don't interfere in lives of those whom your interference is not welcome. Some people love interference. Oh, tell me, what should I do? What should I cook? What should I do? Where should I live? So on and so forth. I know of a marriage that broke because the mother decided to break relations with her daughter-in-law because they had children two years before the mother said they should have children. Come on, come on. That is absolutely ridiculous. Allah has not given you. It's not within your jurisdiction. Allah has not given you the right to say that. It's not your right. But things have happened as ridiculous as that. Ask yourself, maybe in my life, maybe in your life, there are things happening, possibly not as ridiculous, but they are strangling relationships. Make it easy. Solve it. Go back today. Sort the matter out. I haven't even got to you know, cheating in marriage and so on, because that's a topic on its own. That is a big disaster, especially today. But I can also add one quick note to say, when your spouse has made a mistake, remember step number one is not to want out. No ways. That's the last step. Step number one is to seek medication, to solve the matter. The man made a mistake or the woman made a mistake. Try and solve the problem. Help them. They may come out of that mistake better than they ever were. You may have a more blissful marriage when you help them through the problem. That's one of your duties as a spouse. Remember this. With us, one problem, hey, I saw a message. It just says, I love you. Who the hell is this fight? I want out. I'm going. I don't want to talk to you. Out. 
Nick, the man says, kalak, kalak, kalak. You know how it's like a lawn mower. Allahu Akbar. People think they're mowing the lawn. That's not how you divorce a woman. That's actually worse than an animal's way of speaking. And then you find out, oh, that was just a message from her mother or her father. And then you hit your head. Too late. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. Really, someone makes a mistake, try and help. Solve the matter. Even if it is a real disaster. If you're a real spouse, you will help in that way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Those who are not married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you and give you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. And those who are married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you bliss in your marriages. Those who have marital problems, may this be a means, inshallah, of you sorting out your problems by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.